welcome back guys to another video today i'm reacting to top 10 british actors who totally stole the show so we're going to get right into this one so come on in wrap back put a smile on your face and enjoy to all my regular regulars day one sweetie pies sweetie pools come on in wrap back put a smile on your face and enjoy this reaction of the island girl all right without further ado we're going to get into this one i'm getting this one from watch mojo uk here we go now Right, baby. They're not always in the lead roles, but they definitely stand out. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 British actors who stole the show in films. Okay. Who, no, hold on. Who used to be the pride of LOL, huh? Right here. Who's the pride of LOL now? Right there. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Okay. For this list, we're looking at actors in seemingly small roles or roles with limited screen time who ultimately overshadowed the rest of the cast. Okay. These movies simply wouldn't have been the same without these guys. You tell young Valen, I'm gonna paint Paradise Square with his blood. Two coats. Number 10, Tom Hardy, The Dark Knight Rises. Why are you here? We might have included Hardy for his role as John Fitzgerald in The Revenant, but this performance as the seemingly unstoppable juggernaut Bane in part three of Christopher Nolan's acclaimed Dark Knight trilogy proved a defining moment in the actor's career. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. You're a big guy. For you. Batman may have the gadgets and the vehicles, but Bane is clearly the coolest character in this film, with his eerie voice and unsettling mask. We will fulfill a classic boost test today. We will destroy gossip. Plus, Bane's sympathetic backstory also provides one of the film's more interesting twists. I praise the madman who tried to murder my own child, but I can no longer live with my lie. It is time to trust the people of Gotham with the truth. Number 9, Tim Roth, Planet of the Apes. This adaptation of the 1968 film of the same name received mixed reviews, with lead actor Mark Wahlberg criticised for what many dismissed as a rather soulless performance. This one looked at me. By contrast, Roth was praised for his portrayal of the brutal and ambitious General Thade, even earning a nomination for Best Supporting Actor at the 2002 Saturn Awards. I'll report the matter to the Senate myself. They'll beat their chests and ask for my help. Roth researched chimp behavior in detail before the film, and his performance vividly portrays the animal's unpredictable nature as well as their physical strength. Sadly, far too few people even realized that it was him underneath all the makeup and prosthetics. A trade. Is that what you're proposing? Yourself for the humans? Number eight. But you see why my mouth is open? I did not realize it was him who played that part. I swear to you. That's crazy that it was Ross. I had no clue he was that. Interesting. I thought it was an American actor who played that part. As, and then Mark Warbon was very good as well. Now, the first one in Gotham, I am not familiar with that show. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I do know who he, who he is. I don't. So that's why I didn't really say anything on number 10. Okay, let's continue. Judy Dench, Shakespeare in Love. Judy Dench's role as Queen Elizabeth I in this film amounted to just eight minutes of screen time. Yet, it won her an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Even Dent recognized the shortness of her role when she received the statuette, joking that she should only get a little bit of the Oscar. What do you love so much? Your Majesty. Speak up, girl. I know who I am. For every one of those eight minutes, though, Dame Judy dominated the film with a witty and understated performance as the Tudor ruler. So much so, her role is still what this movie is best remembered for. Have her then, but you're a lordly fool. Number seven, Robert Shaw, Jaws. Gotta be honest, I still haven't seen the movie. I need to go and check it out. But she's an amazing actress. No going around that. No question. Ask. Period. Point blank. So she's definitely going to steal the show. Come on, people. We all know. Come on. Of course she has to be on the list. I thought she would have been way more down on the list, closer to the number one spot. But let's continue. 
Though he wasn't the lead for this game-changing thriller, Shaw stole the show as the grizzled veteran shark hunter Bartholomew Quint. As to swimming with bow-legged women. According to reports, the Jaws script was still being written as scenes were being filmed, forcing Shaw to improvise many of his lines. He had silly hands, Mr. Hooper. But he was still able to deliver one of cinema's most memorable and chilling monologues, recounting the harrowing story of the sinking of the USS Indianapolis after it was hit by two Japanese torpedoes. Oh. The only thing about a shark is got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. Decades later, his performance is still as effective as it was in 1975. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I brought him! <laughs> Number six, Benedict Cumberbatch, Star Trek Into Darkness. Intellect alone is useless in a fight, Mr. Spock. You, you can't even break a rule. How would you be expected to break bone? The part of Khan Noonie and Singh was originally offered to Benicio Del Toro in this sequel, but it is hard now to imagine anyone other than Cumberbatch playing the role, with the obvious exception of Ricardo Montalban from the original series and Wrath of Khan film. My name is Khan. The central pairing of Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto as Kirk and Spock remains the beating heart of the story, but Cumberbatch still steals loads of limelight with his steely yet impassioned performance as one of Star Trek's most iconic villains. Captain. Super smart, super strong, and super bad, Khan makes for an intimidating figure, and one that leaves a lasting impression. Your crew, for my crew. You betrayed us. Oh, you are smart, Mr. Spock. Spock, do <laughs> Number five, Tom Hill. Ain't gonna lie, he's good. He's really good. I loved every minute of him. I know he was a villain, but I loved <laughs> I loved his performance. Amazingly done. Let's continue. Hiddleston, Thor. With a few notable exceptions, the villains oh. of the MCU have often been criticized for being boring and or one-dimensional. This was to be my day of triumph. It'll come. But no one would say that about the trickster god, Loki. He's the brains to Thor's brawn. And whilst Chris Hemsworth's character is a likeable hero, there's no doubt that Loki is the more complex brother, with his yep. sense of vulnerability and his need for acceptance. Why have you done this? To prove to father that I am a worthy son. In fact, so impressive was Hiddleston in the role that Loki went on to become the main antagonist in the subsequent Avengers movie and a recurring character in later films. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. Slowly, intimately. In every way he knows you fear. Number four, Christian Bale. Love him. Sorry, I just loved him. Loved his car. I even watched the off oh, um when you learn about Loki period on, on his little series. And I'm like, baby, I I just love his character. I love it. It just tickles my fancy. Even though he's the villain, don't get me wrong, I love Thor, but there was just something about Loki that that gets me i'm like no it keep, he keeps me guessing and i think that's that, that that shows you how amazing he is at what he was doing love him to the max it's my second villain that i really enjoy <laughs> a fighter this true life flick about boxer mickey ward was supposed to be mark Wahlberg's film you don't need Here to be going to see where this fight is headed <laughs> Not only did Warburg play the lead role, he also produced the movie and spent five years trying to get it made. But Bale stole the spotlight with his portrayal of Ward's half-brother, Dickie Eklund, himself a former boxer who succumbs to a crack cocaine addiction. Mm. Fade, you're gonna get high. Bale's performance bagged him an Oscar and astound the real-life Mickey Ward, who claimed that if you saw Eklund and Bale from behind, you wouldn't know who it was. Well, my brother loves you, and you can't just run away because of me. He don't deserve that. Number three, Daniel Day-Lewis, Gangs of New York. Day-Lewis is renowned for taking method acting to extremes, and for his role as Bill the Butcher Cutting, he is said to have trained as an actual butcher and even sharpened knives between takes. Wow. Pope's new army, a few crusty bitches and a handful of ragtags. Whatever he did, worked, because he easily upstages co-stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Cameron Diaz as a sociopath who ruled the 19th century slums of Lower Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a very similar establishment myself. Now everything you see belongs to me, to one degree or another. Bill the Butcher is arguably one of the most frightening cinema characters of all time, and the role won Day Lewis a BAFTA award and a nomination for Best Actor at the Academy Awards. Whatever takes your fancy, my young friend. 
Number two, Alan Rickman. Not familiar with Bill the Butcher. Sorry. I think I should know, but I don't. Like I said, I don't watch a lot of movies. So that's one of my problems. I don't I, I've been getting into movies lately from doing these videos. I'm like, okay, let me check this movie out. But not familiar with him at all. Die Hard. Rickman frequently outperformed his high-profile co-stars, and in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, it's rumoured that Kevin Costner had some of Rickman's scenes cut because he was being outshone. I'm gonna cut your heart out with a spoon! Then it begins. For this list, though, we've chosen Rickman's first major film role as the unforgettable all-action villain, Hans yep. Gruber. Mm -hmm. When Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. Amidst the gunfire and explosions, it's Rickman who stands out with a sinister smile and his casual ruthlessness. Sure did. Even his death scene is epic, with the stunt crew reportedly dropping him prematurely, so his reaction was more believable. Wow. Number one, Anthony Hopkins, The Silence of the Lambs. Ask 100 people who the star of this horror classic is, and they will probably give you the same answer. Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Hopkins won an Academy Award for his portrayal of the terrifying serial killer, yet amazingly, his character spent just 16 minutes on screen. That expires in one week. You're not real FBI, are you? When he does appear, he both repels and attracts with his frosty smile and brilliant mind. The American Film Institute once voted Lecter the number one villain of the last 100 years, surpassing Darth Vader and Psycho's Norman Bates. And it's tough to disagree. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Not gonna bits? lie, number one spot is well deserved. Number two spot. I'll give it to him, I ain't gonna lie. Loki, I think, could be um, down a little further. Uh, what's her name? Oh, man, how could I forget? I think she should have been down a little further, closer to the number one spot. Oh, man, I'm, I'm losing, a, drawing a blank here. But love the picks. I'm not gonna lie. I really do love the picks. Um, some of the actors I did not know, but for all the ones that I'm familiar with, yeah, they belong on belong on the list. I ain't go live. No, no joke. It's a great pick. Come to think about it. Um, I think there are others that didn't um catch us from um amazing actor actors that I've watched that should have been on here. But I I uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What you think? Let, let me know. But I did enjoy this top 10 pick. It's really interesting. Don't forget to go in the comment section and tell me what you'd like me to check out next. It's the island girl and I'm running out of here. <laughs> My head is blank. <laughs> Come on and wrap back with a smile on your face and enjoy. Don't forget to go in the comment section and tell me what you want me to react to next. Be good. Be kind. Be safe. Love each other. Please. I'll see you guys in another one. Bye.